Hello and welcome to HMS Tech Talks, where we discuss the latest trends within industrial uh, automation and IIoT. Uh, today we're going to talk about the smart grid and how that can be enabled in the future. And with me to discuss that today we have Martin Matt from our Ixet business unit. So welcome Martin. Hello, thank you. Um, so starting off, what is the smart grid? Uh, first, the smart grid is uh, nothing else than just a buzzword. So there's no real definition for that. But I think everyone agrees that the so-called smart grid is uh, our power grid uh, being able to adapt to all the changes that are happening right now. So we have electric vehicles, we have coal and nuclear power plants switched off, we have lots of renewable powers coming in and stuff like that. And we need to adapt to this and uh, therefore we need to do changes on the very conservative power grid we have right now, which was designed and built up more than 100 years ago. So we need to do changes, and this is, I guess, called smart grid. Mm, all right. How does it work from from a, from a technical point of view? Because you have all these uh, all these things being hooked in, like um, home panel, solar panels to nuclear plants and uh, uh, consumers and producers. Of, uh, how does it work from a technical point of view? Uh, there are lots of differences, of course. So the big power plants are directly connected to the control station, to someone who's managing it. Uh, the, the consumers who are also producing energy, we call them prosumers, uh, it's a combination. So people who have, uh, for example, solar roof panels, and uh, they can uh, combine, so you can take like a hundred or a thousand of these people and combine them to so-called virtual power plants. And there's a virtual power plant uh, provider who is uh, managing all your stuff and he's combining all these uh, little producers to one big uh, power plant. And this is one uh, possible technical solution. If we manage to uh, realize the smart grid, what's the potential, both from a financial and perhaps moreover an environmental point of view? Uh, once the, the grid is transformed to a so-called smart grid, uh, of course the ef efficiency will increase uh, drastically. So um, we will move away from the centralized idea to a more, uh, you know, more small island. So maybe your neighbor has a, has a battery in his basement and he's feeding your uh, vehicle charger. So it's more efficient, of course. So we will save a lot of money, of course, for the customers and for the companies as well. And we will uh, do a huge movement towards zero emission. So we can use renewable energies much more efficient and maybe we can rely 100% on them one day. If the smart grid uh, has all these uh, benefits, wh why isn't it being deployed faster than it is? Uh, of course there are different interests depending on the company which is involved. Um, of course you have to do lots of investments to be able to modernize your grid to make it smart. So, uh, yeah, I think these are the key factors here. But, and from our point of view at HMS, uh, because there, there are a lot of uh, devices, a lot of machines that need to be uh, connected and communicate. So w w where does HMS fit into to the smart grid? HMS fits in quite many places uh, within the smart grid. So starting at the generators and the big consumers. So these are basically industrial machines and we have a lot of communication equipment for this. Uh, up to the SCADA systems, the control stations, which has to be connected to these uh, consumers and producers. Therefore, we have, for example, the SG gateways, smart grid gateways, which are capable of translating between the smart grid uh, protocols and the industrial protocols. So we have a lot of possible solutions. All right, thanks very much for joining us, Martin. Um, if you, you want to know more about uh, the smart grid and uh, the XSAT solutions for the smart grid, uh, check out our website, it's xsat.com or hmsnetworks.com. Thanks very much for listening.